Hey guys, what's up? Murder of Birds here. Welcome back to the channel. So we're going to be getting into the next batch of reactions for Red vs. Blue Season 11. This is going to be my reaction to Episode 7, 8, and 9, if I'm not mistaken. And it's going to be continuing off of the last batch, which was very exciting. Uh, some things are slowly creeping in and, and developing with the plot. The Blues are forwarding the plot like never before, with Washington uh, finally getting uh, the comms fixed with the help of Lopez, just smacking the, like, the radio or whatever. Donuts back in the the picture which is really exciting caboose has a new best friend so to speak reds are still being reds acting a fool acting up tucker is uh evolving you know what i mean they're slowly like uh washington is slowly trying to develop and develop him to be a proper soldier you know having him go through obstacle courses doing constant squats running track and all that other stuff um and i don't know if that is slowly based on the fact that maybe tucker will slowly start to take the reins washington is also very anxious and nervous of of the fact that they haven't been found and it's probably because you know he's been through so much shit that he's still not out of it yet he still has to make sure that he can guarantee his survivability his safety the safety of you know his soldiers on the blue team obviously now that he has a responsibility he sees all of them as his really close friends and carolina just ran off with a uh, epsilon in his eyes so it's kind of like all on him now he's bearing all of the weight of making sure that they make it out of this alive and no one else is really helping him so that's a little stressful obviously of a process for him to go through lopez is back well not lopez lopez but lopez 2.0 is back uh i genuinely do not remember the last time we saw lopez i wouldn't be surprised if it was blood gulch to be honest i i honestly want to say at some point maybe season six we saw him i don't really remember him being in the valhalla section of of the story all that much um because my memory really does escape me because it's been so many years since i've been catching up from where i started uh you know in 2016 to where we are now in 2020 um getting into chorus but he's back in 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 spirit the original is back but this new one is definitely a step up in many ways he doesn't seem uh, uh, like agitated or annoyed by the fact that he's on a team with people who he's probably way smarter than um you know he's willing to help out in any situation he still speaks spanish so his settings are still set to spanish and i, I love that they retained that aspect of him that he's he has like broken Sp spanish uh translations which is really funny um I don't know if it's translated the same way. I don't know. I don't. I don't really remember who translated like the the English, tra uh, the Spanish translations for the original Lopez. I wonder if it. I, I wonder. I don't know if it was Bernie or if it was somebody else or if it was uh, Matt who ended up doing Lopez's uh, translation um, voice acting. But he's back, which is really great. I hope we get to see him in a greater capacity than simply being there to repair X, Y, and Z that happens. Because now that Lopez is there, he fixed the control tower. And they also have the, the the warthog or the puma that's like hanging on the chain in the in the one area of the of the base, which is I assume the one that brought them there initially. Um, so I, I feel like he's just going to be the Mister Fix It of the area until things develop further. I don't really know if he's going to be central to the plot aside from just being maybe comic relief uh, for the Reds and Blues, especially since he bounces off of Sarge um, uh, really well, especially uh, in previous seasons. Caboose went off and made a new best friend. I, 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 so I did look up the name just to make sure I got it properly because in the last batch I had to play it by ear. So his name is Freckles and he's like this Mantis and the Mantis is a new vehicle that was added to Halo 4. And it's funny because I mentioned, I don't know if, I think I mentioned it in my first batch post thought. So like I think episodes one through three, I talked about it and I was like, I'm pretty sure they added new vehicles. I, I know they added a Mantis. I wonder if we'll see it. Lo and behold, now, the thing is, and it's really strange, Caboose has a very keen affinity for artificial intelligence, and I mentioned that in the last batch as well. So you had Sheila, you have Epsilon, and I'm assuming Freckles is some form of AI, right? Because he talks and he responds to Caboose and all that stuff, so there, there is a machine learning entity within this contraption right this 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 draw this assault droid of sorts and i don't know if, if if i don't know if caboose just has a thing for ai obviously it's not like a smart ai it's not like project freelancer ai but it, it is more so like a sheila ai or a vic ai it's it's kind of like um a pro, uh, what's the word i'm looking for like a 
it's it's a specific program AI that that does a specific set of functions. It's not like gonna run off and try to take over the world in any th or anything like that. At least I don't think so. Um, it doesn't have the same personality levels of of AI like the fragments did, for example. But but nonetheless, it's an AI all the same. And and, and again, Caboose had a strong affinity for Sheila had a strong affinity for Epsilon being his best friend, Church, and now this is his replacement best friend, Freckles, and I'm just hoping he doesn't just blow up everybody in that base because he he seems unhinged. If uh, Unless Caboose... Let's just hope Caboose doesn't get angry, doesn't get upset, doesn't... doesn't They don't set him off to where he's like, kill the Reds and Blues, and he's like, yes, master, and then he's just firing Rain Cannon, which was a great callback again because Caboose was piloting Sheila when the firing main cannon initially killed Alpha back in Blood Gulch, and now he's got a new one that's trying to kill the Reds and Blues, uh, or, or typically the Reds for the most part. So I think that's all, it just screams Blood Gulch Chronicles. It screams nostalgia. It screams reminiscence of, of fonder times of the series. And uh, at the very end of the last batch, we also got... A glimpse of a uh, of a new character that we've never seen before, and uh, he's picking up on the um, the distress signal that Wash sent out. He was like, "Hi, my name is." He's like, "Hey, my name is Agent Washington. I'm with the soldiers of Project of Project Freelancer. We need help. We're stranded." And I'm like, "Bro." This is what I was stressing about in the first batch, and in the first batch I was wrong because he, he just kept the journal entry, but then he just kind of threw out all of his information. So we don't know if this guy's UNSC, we don't know if this guy's Car on Industries, we don't know if this is another freelancer, we don't know if this is just a, another wild card out there doing whatever the fuck, He's, he seems to be solo and, and kind of doing his own thing. So a, a new character enters the fray now, and we still haven't seen Epsilon um, Church... Uh, and we haven't seen uh, Carolina yet. So, and this is going to be, I think now that after this batch, I think we're going to be over the halfway mark of the season. So hopefully we get to see them. I, I really miss Epsilon and, and Carolina, and I, I really want to see what they're doing. And if anything that they do leads them back to some Project Freelancer memories and, and flashbacks and moments, especially with Carolina, now that she no longer has that weighing her down. Um, after the events of season 10, but you know, we'll have to wait and see but ultimately I'm, I'm very excited as you guys can probably tell to get into this next batch I don't know what the reds and blues are gonna be doing I hope this new character kind of jumps in and kind of kickstarts things off for the plot at the very least Washington also is gonna probably be on his toes with managing and, and keeping things in order because now He's dealing with everything until until afterwards, and Dona is also back in the picture. We never understood or figured out why it was that he split with the Reds and Blues, because he was with them at the end of Season 10, and uh, it, it's all on Dona. So that could go however many ways. I, I don't know if Doc will ever come back, because he's always been a middleman between the Reds and Blues, and, and he was stuck in Valhalla, and then he got, I believe he, I don't know if he got captured by the UNSC, but he did encounter, he was left behind with the UNSC troops because the Reds and Blues just yoinked their, their hornets and, and made their way to, to help out Epsilon and Carolina uh, towards the end of Season 10. So a lot of different things going on, a lot of different things are evolving and, and manifesting. With the plot, we're going to get through this next batch together, so I really do hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you guys as well so much for your continued support over on Patreon. And before we jump into that, I do want to give an extra special uh, shout-out to those of you in the uh, Wizard of Remnant as well as the Silver Eyed Warrior tiers for your continued support of these videos as early as possible for, um, you know, the kindness, the generosity, the support, um, the patience, and, and, and all your feedback that you guys have given me over the years, especially continuing on with Season 11. And an extra special thank you goes out to Daniel Burns, Ezra Lee, Gota Kai, Ian Dodd, Jamie Coleman, Matthew Trapp, Michael, and Winter Schnee. Thank you guys all so much. Thank you so much to everybody watching as well, uh, whether it's on patreon or on youtube the support overall means so much to me um and without further ado we're gonna get into this all right guys we're gonna be jumping into red versus blue season 11 with episode 7 8 and 9 so i hope you guys look forward to it as always leave your thoughts in the comment section without further ado we're gonna be starting this in three two one now all right oh hold on i didn't put the volume up <laughs> let's try that again three two one now there we go. <clears throat> Alright, so Caboose created Freckles in this scrap? Did he create it? Did he find <laughs> Never mind. Caboose? Yeah. 
Be careful. Yeah. Where did you find this robot? His name is Freckles. Freckles. Okay. Stupid oh. cool, I mean. Yeah, Freeze you better name. watch I mean, your mouth, dude. This thing's going to attack yeah, you. Freckles is the best name ever that there ever was. Technically, it's a mantis class military. Assault. Okay, yeah, so there, Wait, there it mantis? is right there, the mantis. Well, you see those legs? They kind of resemble the legs of a praying mantis. A praying mantis? Oh, no, is that why they're called? Then maybe it's the head shape? Yeah, maybe it's because during the act of procreation, they rip off the head of their body <laughs> and devour it. Like I have the hiccups, by the way. I apologize. <clears throat> what? Yeah, that is true. They uh, they yeah, rip the heads off their mates during the sex. Box on his nose. Mm -hmm. Actually, I have to give it to Caboose That's cute. Robot the little, the little like red arrows on its face. Where did you find freckles? freckles. <laughs> well, I was walking and I was Yeah, he was feeling down. This is the greatest story of our generation. <laughs> Quiet. And Come on. I heard a noise. Seriously. Yeah. Like I was there. Tucker. Yeah, Stop yeah, it. I saw the little guy and her, like... Little guy? This guy's massive. And body parts. But I just moved those out of the way. And then there he was. And now we're best friends <gasps> forever. Right, Freckles? You're like, dug him. Affirmative, Affirmative right. caboose. Affirmative caboose. Dog. dog turns out to be a military-grade killing machine <laughs> from a crashed spaceship. Caboose. Yeah. Um, you know... I don't think you can keep him. A pet is a lot of responsibility. That is why I will water him and I will feed him every Aww. day. Water and feed? What the hell does this He doesn't need either of those things. He's a machine. The power of the friendship of our love. <laughs> this is so fucked up. Didn't you give birth to a baby alien a few years back? Yo, oh, Junior! Into this. No. What a throwback. What adventures are we going to go on today, Freckles? I'm not doing shit. We're getting rescued soon, remember? Actually, not soon. I think it would be smart if we continued with our training routine. What? Why? There's no point. Damn, training dude, you're going through the ringer. And as the leader of this team, I want to make sure that we're ready for anything. Ready this for anything. Stupid. You got that Nothing one guy who's tailing you now. Well, you never know if someone... <laughs> or yeah. Stop complaining and start jogging. Damn, Where dude. Where are you going? I'm heading up to the ship. Someone needs to do an inventory of our food supplies. I'd prefer it be someone who can count. I only screwed <laughs> up twice. You screwed up once. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't see your point. Damn. So you're just gonna leave me with them? <laughs> Five laps, gentlemen. Real quick. Tucker? There's uh there's only three kind of people in this world. People who know how to count and people who don't. Tucker, make sure you count for a caboose. Aw, come on. Yeah, right. Disregarding a direct order from a commanding <laughs> officer is punishable by death. What? This win! Damn, Where dude! God damn it. Okay, I'm going. Oh boy. And who wants to go outside? Who wants to go outside? <laughs> who wants to go outside? He's not a dog, Caboose. Someone go outside. Jesus. Oh my God, we're there you go. go. You're outside. You did it. <laughs> oh, who's got the sniper? What? Sarge has the. They gave Sarge the sniper. That's so weird hey, that he has a sniper, not the shotgun. Kill you to take out the transfer once. Sons, I've been thinking. I don't care. Take out the fucking trash. Why do we carry our guns? What? what? Our guns. Why do we carry them? Because oh, soldiers. God. You got, yeah. like, some existential really crisis. Because you're in a video well, game. Yeah, but you never know when we could be attacked. Attacked by who? The Blues? Uh-oh. <laughs> uh we haven't fought a single goddamn enemy since arriving in this canyon. And yet here we are walking around in full body armor with a rifle in our hands. Like the fucking galaxy. Try dropping it. Second. What's your point? My point is, why don't we ever just walk around without our guns? Because you're in a video game. <laughs> what? Drop your gun. No, you can't. Why not? I don't want to. You don't want to? Or you can't. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm going back inside. Oh boy. And thus Dexter Griff single handedly avoids trash duty for the second hey! day. Hey! Oh my god! Oorah. He's actually Man. galaxy oh, brain for that. Oh, Holy shit. Ura. What the hell? I knew there was a reason we were armed. <laughs> Sorry, what's wrong? Wow. What's wrong? He what's said wrong? that to get out of taking screaming, out the trash. Praying, conniving, commiserating, colluding, take your pick. Also, building a giant robot. Those blues are up to no good. And here I was. You guys are vastly outnumbered, by the way. But, sir, didn't we build a robot first? Who said as I'm blonde demi? Hey! Oh, boy, no, doesn't count. He's about to I mean, he's not. He's first. nothing against hey, the mantis. And they have a tank. B-N. Damn. Men, I know we've considered the blues to be our, quote, allies, unquote, for some time now. Mm. We have to look at the facts. What facts? Number one. They now possess a tank on legs that's capable of killing us all. <laughs> okay. True. And number two is that we didn't have our own number one first. Clearly, this is a conspiracy. 
conspiracy. So what do you expect us to do? How is that a conspiracy? They're not they're not as smart as you think they are. Maybe washes. Tango and cash. Are these orders? Tango and Tango. They're both. You mean go over there? Near that monster? See? This is exactly the kind of robot overlord shit I was talking about. Eh, yeah, he mentioned that earlier. It'll be dangerous. But I have confidence that at least one of you will survive. <laughs> Simmons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, he stays taking shots at Griff. I love it. Now there's sand all over the place. I can see how that might take priority. I got sand in my wallet. That will never fully recover. There's just so many tiny crevices. Sorry, please. I don't want to upset the mantis. What's a mantis? The giant robot. The giant. Oh. Why is it called that? I don't know. Because of the legs look the like a praying mantis. Well, that's not a very good reason to call it a mantis. Tavez lo llaman mantis. Perhaps it's called a mantis because it has advanced camouflage system. Oh dear. Whatever, dum dum. Can't you see we're talking straight? Bro. Stupid new Lopez. Look. You guys are fucking assholes. Oye, vamos chicos. Ya basta. But that robot could flatten us in an instant. You raise an excellent point, Simmons. I do? Yep. <laughs> well, you better not get spotted while you're out there. <laughs> <laughs> Let's Damn. get this over with. But I'm telling you, the blues aren't up to anything. They're really not, though. It's just a happy coincidence. Oh, the food storage. All right. Change of plans. Wait, what? Wait, he's not going to check the food? Where's Washington going? Hello? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Back up, back up real quick. Wait, he said change of plans? But I'm telling you, the blues aren't up to anything. Wait, what, where's Washington going then? He's all paranoid, like, oh, we need to be ready for anything. I'm going to go check the food, but you're not? All right. Change of plans. I really hope Wash isn't becoming, like, his own worst enemy right now. Like, he's so in his head about being worried that something's gonna happen, that he's just gonna, like, lash out on at everybody, even his own team. Hey! No freckles, no freckles go down. He I can't, can. he's a robot. Oh! Yeah, that's good, freckles. Okay, yeah, I guess he... <laughs> yeah, did you see this? I guess he's gonna then, whatever. Now teach him to fetch, <laughs> and then throw a stick off a cliff. Dude, oh, they're gonna have great pick. asses by the end of this Michael, season with how many Michael, squats they're doing. The oh, well, that's one way um, to play fetch. See that? That was just that was just <laughs> poor phrasing on my part. Really, <laughs> I mean, I was just. I, I, I think. I was Dude, this is a great pet. It was grammatically incorrect. Grammatically incorrect. <laughs> All right, we made it. Oh, yeah. what are they doing? They're just, they're just so, doing uh, squats. Do do <laughs> I guess we just watch them? What are they, what do you think they're talking about? <laughs> this is literally the reverse of Blood Gold Chronicles, so, the first season. Time, right? I mean, they're not actually plotting anything. I don't know. Man. God, look at their asses. They look so great doing them really squats. <sighs> this isn't getting us anywhere. Well, why don't you just ask them what they're up to? What? And blow our cover? What do we look like, SEAL Team 6? Who gives a shit, dude? You already said they're not up to anything. But what about the robot? Oh, True. Yeah. That's gonna See, blow your asses to smithereens. To okay, fine. How do we want to do this? Oh, we could do like a sort of good cop, bad cop thing. What if we act casual? Like we're just shooting the shit or something. <laughs> Maybe if we go in guns blazing, we can intimidate them into telling us what we want. Wait. You're not gonna intimidate a freaking want? mantis, dude. I don't know. Hey. <laughs> oh, never mind. Doing? I'm willing to hear you out, but my partner is crazy. I can't hold him back. What? Good I mean, cop, hey, bad cop. Up? How's the weather? No, wait, I mean, tell me what you know. Oh, my God. You just did three I'm different sorry. sequences. That's detective work there, Officer Simmons. <laughs> yeah, so if you guys could not watch us work out, that'd be great. Because it's a little weird. It's really weird. Yeah, kind of. He's to come spy on you. He thinks you're up to something. Dude, the only thing I've done today is exercise. <sighs> You poor tortured soul. <laughs> Griff doesn't know the okay, meaning of the word exercise. The Wake up, run drills. Clean the base, run drills. Maintain order, run drills. I had glamorous calves in a miserable fucking life. Can we please stop running drills? <laughs> I had calves once. Way more tender than a regular cow. You can taste the youth. <laughs> makes you clean the base? And our equipment, and our vehicles. Oh my god, that's like, that's like, that's like Simmons. Yeah. Could you imagine having to deal with someone like that? Roll 
Wilson or yeah, uh, that's like uh, Simmons, like know, dream right? come true. Kind of organizational chart. <gasps> what a loser. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Mm, well, uh, that all sounds very interesting, Tucker. But I think I need to see this for myself. What? Oh uh, yeah. What? Yo, Why don't they just switch places? Like, out. Tucker doesn't want to work bang, anymore, he goes to Red day. Team. Checks out. And then Simmons wants that lifestyle, so just switch armor it's colors. Exposed. It's empty. It's clean, dude. <sighs> clean. Are you sure you want to hang around? Wash might make you run his obstacle course or something. That yeah, sounds like heaven on Earth. <laughs> on your mark? <laughs> this is such bullshit. Oh, oh my. <laughs> He shot him with the shotgun. What a fucking Look, savage. Let me just hang out for a few days. I'll be cool. I swear. Don't lie to the man's face. <laughs> Whatever, dude. Just remember, I warned you. Is he really gonna well, chill? Griff, I guess this Ta is didn't he Wait, used to be on the blue team? Like, didn't he switch Until sides Tom's back done, in Blood Gulch? And you're sure you'd rather be near the blue? He had like blue patches on him. Robot, instead of just coming back to base. Yep. Hey, I think I broke the urinal in the laundry room. We don't have a urinal in the laundry room. <laughs> dude, those cutaway moments are so good, Whatever, dude. Whatever your funeral, just remember, if a robot ever corners you, just stick him with a magnet. Computers haven't been affected by magnets since the 20th century. Which is exactly what they want you to think. Hey. <sighs> Finally, a place I can call home. Mm-mm. Alright, What's Sim- what's Wash Back. gonna think? Oh! Hey, Caboose! Drop your ball. N no, you're gonna die. Oh, what did I do? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm sorry. We're just playing, you know, just, just some good old fetch lunch. with the dog. Oh we boy. I can't. Sarge says I throw like a girl. <laughs> wow, these episodes are flying, dude. Yeah, this is the last one. Oh damn, Griff's gonna be like, yeah, we we just lost the teammate. You don't speak Spanish. See, you've returned from your reconnaissance mission unscathed. That's disappointing. Well, except Andre, lo que tipo con usted. What's this guy's beef with you? What information have you recovered? Uh, that the blues aren't up to anything and that you're a paranoid old man bordering on senility? Uh-huh. I'll take that into it's about, consideration. It's about right. But how about we hear from our more competent soldier? Yeah, he ditched us. Simmons? He's with the blues. With the blues? Yeah. Yep. Really to stay at their base for some reason. Well, I suppose it was only a matter of time. Matter of time. <laughs> yep. This dramatic this shot. This is awesome. Really? The cameras, are, the leave. camera I shots mean, are really are good this this season. Chris, are you even paying attention? I mean, not really. <laughs> I first they killed a giant robot. <laughs> when does Griff pay attention? Second command. It's just as they didn't capture him. He wanted to stay. Finally showed its true colors. And that color is pound zero 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 FF. What? Blue. 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 It's red versus blue all over again. Red versus no, blue are the same. Captured. Can you believe it? He also Hopefully said the show's name. He's like red versus blue. After our conflict had seemingly ended, they've pulled off the most elaborate ruse in the history of simulated military combat. I don't. I mean, really? How far back did they start planning this thing? This Not man like, is like stuck in his own world right now. From the beginning. Sarge. And what about Church? For years they told us he was a ghost, <laughs> but then he was an ancient artifact or something, and there were aliens involved. I don't know. Sometimes I wonder just how deep this rabbit hole goes. Stop. This it's poor man. Like all of this is some sort of sick game. Oh. Conversation He's breaking the fourth mad. wall. It right. is a sick game. It's Halo 4. I think you're jumping to conclusions. Oh, oh boy. Conclude, you need to shut your mouth and move your feet. What are you going to do? Are you gonna have my shotgun? My rips. shotgun court martial. Oh no. It makes me happy knowing you're ignored as much as I am around here. Poor Lopez, man. He came back for this. Came back to freaking just be ignored. Objective complete. That's cheating. Oh shit. What? Do you have any idea when Wash is getting back? I had some suggestions regarding the upkeep of Blue Bay. I don't know, and I don't care. Well, I've got two words for you, buddy. <laughs> Chore wheel. And I've got two words for you. Suck it. How about fuck off? Or that. Just <laughs> think about it. Wheel of chores. Oh, boy. I hate my life. Tucker! You know what? I take it back. I hate everyone else's lives. Wish I didn't have them. <laughs> oh, my God. Am I turning into church? Why aren't you running bro? I guess. You know, I didn't Imagine that, dude. He's becoming cynical. About irritated nipples. I'm telling you. My chest piece rubs right up Where did Wash go? 
Why do you refuse to take these things seriously? Why can't you just let us do our thing? I'm trying to make sure you're the best, that you're ready for anything. Why? Blue Team was just fine with being mediocre until you came along. What the fuck are you worried about? It's just a feeling. I can't explain it. Really? Because I bet I can. You're paranoid? Ex special ops guy who's used to being betrayed on a weekly basis. Aw, come not on, that's not watch. nice. Hey, next, do you want to figure out the mystery of why Caboose isn't the team treasurer? Oh, <laughs> so we're going there. Oh, bitch, I already went there. But I'm the bitch. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, girl. Okay, oh, Caboose, it. stop it. Lavernius, you just always Lavernius have to Tucker. Mr. Quick witted, Mr. Sarcastic. If you spend as much time training as you do mouthing off, you could probably beat Freckles in arm wrestling. Don't be stupid. <laughs> Freckles doesn't have arms, he has guns. Hey, oh, <laughs> guns, Freckles get it. <laughs> get it. Oh, he boy. Awesome. These two need to chill, yeah, man. Yeah, still working on it. Oh, hey, Wash. I didn't Wash know is back. being a little what aggressive is... right now, not going to lie. Why is he here? Also, yeah, you got to write on your team now. I hope you don't mind. I don't have time to deal with you right now. Go away. <laughs> Good one, sir. Oh, hey, by the way, is it cool if I start calling you sir? Why is he still here? Jesus. If I was him, I'd be as far away from this base as possible. You can call me champ if you want. <laughs> or, you know... Son. Son. Just ignore him. <laughs> or Sir Junior. Look, as long as I'm sure of this... He needs a father figure in his life. ...to ensure your safety whether you like it or not. We don't need you protecting us. <laughs> Wait, whose sniper was that? That's why I'm trying to help... Was that Sarge? Help us with what? Defending against attack? No one is going to attack us. Attack! Whoa! Oh, you Wait. got to be fucking kidding me. If he was on the gunner, who was on the sniper? Oh, right. Is that person here already? Oh, shit, the fucking dude! Oh, my God, the fucking Puma music! <laughs> Hold on, I gotta go back to that. Oh, That's Blood Gold, dude, this is literally Blood Gold! You forgot our theme music! Oh, right. Ah, forget it, Mama's past. Oh my god, that's a great. Ah, uh, good freckles. Oh boy, no target murder, acquired. Everyone. Come on, guys, y'all are fucking on edge. You guys are about to be saved in a couple days. Uh, I would just like to take this opportunity to point out that this was not my idea <laughs> whatsoever at all. Yeah, that's a it's a little too much work for for Griff to take credit in saying that he had any idea or any plans of doing that. Yo, okay, so real real quick, so first off, episode to episode, very blood gulch maintained. I think that's really what I have to kind of get invested into into expecting going for. So there's one scene right here that I thought that was I thought I honestly thought it was Sarge because Sarge had the, right here. So there's somebody chilling in the trees looking down on them, but it can't be Sarge because Sarge just came barreling in on the gunner in the Puma. So I assume the person who was teased in the last episode in the last at the end of the uh, the last batch, um, I assume this is them. I am that I mean I'm I'm led to believe that this is them. I was like, "Wait a minute." Because I thought I for, at first I thought this was Sarge because I was like, "Oh, Sarge had the sniper in the earlier shot." Unless this is just an inconsistency and this is Sarge and then he somehow got into the warthog and then they barreled over, but that would have that happens in like this happens like 3 seconds later he he comes charging in. And wait, hold on. What's he saying right here? Hold on. I got to So like he's listening in to what they're talking about right now so let me let me see i'd be as far away from this base as possible you can call me champ if you want <laughs> or, or son you know, son just ignore him. so what does wash say right junior. here Look, as long as i'm leader of this team i will do everything in my power to ensure your safety whether you like it or not we don't need you protecting us mm. i know that's why i'm trying to help you help us with what defending against attack no one is going to attack us Attack! <laughs> Attack! Oh, you! Oh, you've got to be fucking kidding me! Yeah. So first off, you got attacked by the reds, by the reds, and second of all, you got this person chilling in a tree, looking down on y'all. Who I don't know if they're friend or foe. Oh man. So.
a couple of things. I want to know if that's actually a different person. And second of all, I want to know what Washington was doing in the ship because he didn't go and check on the food. He was like, change of plans. So he's hiding something from the Reds and Blues right now or from his own team. He's also very, very cautious, like overly cautious. Like Caroline is gone. Church is gone. He doesn't know when he's going to be saved. He doesn't know who's going to find them. And he'd rather us prepare for the worst and be overprepared than underprepared. But it's like in his head, it's like, what do you think? Like, you have to think something or someone is is after you. Like, what's on your mind, champ? You know what I mean? And he's he's kind of laying everything into Tucker right now because it's, it's it's just him and Caboose and the Reds always fuck around like they don't they don't forward the plot they're not gonna be saving the day anytime soon so Tucker you know what I mean like he's pretty chill pretty laid back he's not really the type of character to take responsibilities or anything like that he'll like weasel his way through he's almost he's like the Griff equivalent but he kind of puts in a little bit more effort um, but now like Washington is kind of pushing him a little hard. And I, I understand where Washington's coming from, but I do think there's some validity to what Tucker said. He's like, you're used to people betraying you all the time. You're used to always like um, making sure you're fine and making sure that you have your own back. But Wash is also coming from a a, a place of uh, like a like a like a like a what's the word I'm looking for? He's coming from a good place because he's saying like as long as I'm on this team, I'll make sure that you're we you're ready to take on whatever comes our way. So he's not doing this to be an asshole. He's doing this to kind of ensure that, especially if something happens to Wash, and that, that makes me feel like something's going to happen to him because why would they force Wash to put be so aggressive to Caboose and to Tucker if something wasn't going to happen to him, if he's always going to be there to, to help out and to be able to pick up the slack. So I wonder if if that's what's happening here. It seems like he's building up for Tucker to become the center focus or the center stage of whatever is going to be going on because, like I said, Carolina and Epsilon are no longer in the picture. Um, other than that, it's, it's mostly, again, like I said, more red versus blue shenanigans for the most part. And I'm pretty sure that's going to be the, the name of the game for at least season 11. Because I feel like after this batch, we're going to be over the halfway mark. I believe there's three more batches for season 11. And obviously, the season 12 and season 13. Or maybe the latter half of season 11 is where things will pick up. But at, at least for right now, there's not much to extrapolate. There's not much to apply or add on in terms of a conversation. It's, it's very much a refined, top-notch commentary uh top-notch comedy top-notch banter top-notch i love the cutaway moments like where they're like they're, they're having a current conversation and then it harkens back to like a previous moment which reinforces the humor in the moment um i really like that like the oh the 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 urinal in the laundry room isn't working we don't have a we don't have a urinal in the laundry room oh and then he just like walks off off screen i think that's really really clever the camera placements too are 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 a very interesting touch. More emphasis on like the close-ups for like those dramatic moments, like what 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 was just happening here between Sarge and um and Griff. I don't know. There's just minor things that I I don't I don't remember those happening as much in previous seasons. I also and I know I've talked about this a bit, but I really really like their armor. Um. I know some of the armor gets really like, uh, what's it? What's the word I'm looking for? The, some of the armor gets very um, exaggerative in its style. I think that's the three four three style armor. But at least like the the current like Spartan armor that they I think this is Spartan six or Spartan five armor. But like this like like Griff right here on screen. He like his armor looks like the best version of Griff's armor that we've seen since season one, like from Halo 1 to Halo 2 to Halo 3 to Halo 4. I, I just love the way their armor looks. The colors really pop. Like you can see that that's orange. You can see Griff's armor um, and like Sarge's armor and Simmons armor. I just like the aesthetic. I like the way the light hits it. And it looks way better too because I, I remember the last scene, the last scene of Blood Gulch Chronicle. I'm sorry, the last scene of uh, season 10, like, I guess they had an early build. I think someone told me that the last scene of season 10 when they were in this area, like their visors were kind of like 
orange, like, like they were kind of like yellowish green. Uh, people mentioned that they had an early build of the game, and this episode, that episode had come out like a couple days before Halo 4 released. So basically, uh, Rooster Teeth had an early build of Halo 4 for that scene, like as a tease for like the up the upgrade in 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 animation and the upgrade in like the game's engine from Halo. Uh, I think it was Halo 3 to Halo 4. So I, I love how it actually looks. Like the visor color looks great. I, I just love everything. The lighting, the aesthetic of the armor, the colors, everything kind of like works for what they look like. They look like them. I, and it, it sounds weird, but it, it, they just look really, really good. I, I just really like the aesthetic. I don't really know what more I can say. And I think these are still the same assault rifles. I don't know if this is the assault rifle or if this is the battle rifle. Uh, I, actually, that kind of looks like a battle rifle now that I think about it. So they don't have the regular like assault rifles that they carry around from the other ones. And this was a, a really cool and funny scene too, like the existential, like why can't you put your weapon down? It's like you, can't, you don't want to, or you can't put it down because we're in a video game. So um, yeah, I mean overall the the, the banter is still there. It's it's very casual. It's very laid back. I almost feel out of place. Because I, I honestly think since season seven, season seven, season eight, I've constantly been gathering information and deeply analyzing and breaking down scenes and moments and events and like references and stuff like that. So it kind of feels weird to just watch events happen and watch them play out and just that's it. That's the content. Um and obviously, I feel like it's eventually building up to something. I don't know when we're going to see Carolina in church again. Uh, I don't know when we're going to see this new character, if that was the new character that was scoping them out in the treetops, which I assume it is, just because it doesn't make sense that that would be Sarge on one end and then Sarge on the back of the gunner as well. Um, but yeah, there's just so much additional stuff that kind of harkens back like they mentioned junior in the episode they brought back the freaking puma music which was really funny um another thing that's a little odd is like i thought their puma was broken down i thought the one that was hanging by the entrance uh gate i thought that was their puma but apparently they still have their puma so i'm like how are you shipwrecked then you know what I mean? Like, that that, that that doesn't really make sense. Unless they mention shipwrecked, like, they crashed the airship. Like, the airship is what brought them here. Are they on a different planet? That's the only thing that I'm a little worried about. Because it's like, you have vehicles. You're actually able to get out of here. Unless the shipwrecked was, like, they got on the ship to come to this new planet or this new place. And it crashed here. And they're stuck on this planet. I think that's what's happening. I might have overlooked that. But if someone in the comments can let me know. Um, just because I thought... I thought they didn't have a vehicle. I thought they didn't have a means of being able to leave this place. Um, but they said shipwrecked. So I think they mean like the airship crashing is what led them to be stranded here. So yeah, it took an extra batch for me to put that together. So maybe that's the situation. And um, then th I guess that means they're on a different planet. Then? I don't know. It's also called Chorus Trilogy. So is the planet called Chorus? What is Chorus? Like, what does that mean? Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of everything right now. Like Washington's worrying me a little bit. I don't know if they are, I don't know if they're, they're setting up for something to happen to Washington. That's why he's like making sure his soldiers are ready to kind of, you know, the passing of the torch, if you will, if he gets captured, if the, if they're planning on killing him off, I, I, I honestly don't know. Or if they're just trying to build up Tucker to be the new main character because Church and Carolina are no longer around. And Church has always been like the main character. Like even during Blood Gold 2, he was the main character. And then Epsilon became the main character who then took on the identity of Church. So I, I feel like with Church gone... Like, Washington is currently the main character, but since he's been around for a while, they're kind of transitioning that now for, for Tucker, I think. And Tucker's never really been one for the spotlight. He's never been the one to be in the center of the action, of the conflict, of the plot. And there was a couple of seasons where he was actually gone for a really long time. So, at least now, it seems like that's what they're leaning towards for the plot. I, I, I don't really know, but that's, that's all I'm grabbing right now. Um, other than that, there's just a bunch of... RVB shenanigans going on a bunch of blood gold chronicles shenanigans that are developing right now freckles is OP mega hacks I don't know how long he's gonna be around for but as long as he's around the blues got nothing to worry about um, 
they're even more outgunned because Simmons is now on the blue team, which he's jumped teams before uh, from from Blood Gold Chronicles, if I'm if I remember correctly, when he like teamed up with, I think he teamed up with Sheila at one point. So there's like there's Tucker, there's Washington, there's Caboose, there's Simmons. They also have a tank, and now they have Freckles. So I'm just like, the Reds, y'all don't stand a fucking chance, a ghost of a chance. And then poor Lopez got recreated and brought back just to be shat on by his own team like they just keep calling him stupid and i feel like one day he's just gonna pack his bags and be like all right i've been disrespected enough enjoy your comms tower that i fixed i'm getting the fuck out of here you know like if he goes and lives with donut and doc somewhere i think that'd be great and obviously everyone is just sitting on their hands waiting for for doc to 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 send help and hopefully he sends help before shit pops off with whoever has their his their crosshairs on these guys and again i think it is this new character um but yeah that's that's everything those are all of my uh current thoughts of of this batch of episodes i think after this batch we will have officially reached the halfway point so hopefully you guys enjoyed uh everything that happened on that front as well again kind of concerned about washington's well-being what was he doing in the airship you know, he didn't even go and check the food. He was like, change of plans. Let me go and do this thing instead on the... And I'm like, what, what are you doing? You know what I mean? Like, where did you go? Like, why aren't you telling anyone? It seems like he's hiding something. And then this this person in the crosshairs as well. It just seems very... a, a lot. It seems like a lot of things are happening slowly behind the scenes. And maybe we'll get some answers as time goes on, but only time will tell so yeah that's the batch that's the episode those are my thoughts i hope you guys enjoyed it i know people mentioned to me after season 10 that season 11 is at a very slower a much slower pace than than season 10 especially when it comes to the plot and when it comes to you know the research and the the the, the, the analyzing and the notes that i usually take and it just seems i almost feel like washington in a way because i have my note i have my pen i have my notebook here i'm, I'm, I'm waiting to start taking down notes and rewatching the episode and then when it's done i'm like Oh, that was a very that was a pretty straightforward episode albeit like the moment with washington and the moment with the the sniper crosshairs looking over on them those were points of like talking about like points of conversation i'm like why did that happen who is that what is this going to entail moving forward so it just feels weird that blood gold chronicles is kind of taking center stage and it's really more so like the comedy the humor the banter like i mentioned in the last batch it, it it's just a lot of downtime moments and, and 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 as someone who's constantly trying to be engaging and have a conversation and talk about stuff and express my excitement my reactions my feelings and stuff it just feels like an element of that is missing and it's not for the bad like i'm not saying this is bad in any way in any case in any shape or form it's just an element of how i make these videos is taken out of is taken out for obviously until things ramp up and until things start becoming more more focal and more of uh more plot heavy i guess i should say um i don't know what carolina and epsilon are up to i'm pretty sure they might actually carry the plot a little, a little more because they are the remnants of you know the the stuff that really what i was really sinking my teeth into which is project freelancer they're you know one of them is also kind of part of the blue team um but yeah, so and maybe this new character, whenever they get introduced, will will add a lot of um, life to discussions and stuff like that. But for right now, the Reds and Blues are kind of in their element. They're kind of doing their own thing. Washington obviously is is kind of thrown out of whack in, in a in a in a sense because of the fact that he is very much on edge with wanting his teammates to be ready for anything he's very paranoid i don't know if he's paranoid for the sake of like the unsc or malcolm hargrove or the car on industries or whatever or if he just maybe he's been in a situation like this where he feels like you know if they don't act quickly well at least for right now they know that donut is here so now they have nothing to do but wait but at the same time, in the meantime of waiting, you're going to make sure that you guys are ready for anything. You know, Freckles can even be an anomaly. This new guy is going to be an anomaly. The Reds screwing around and, and, and declaring war on the Blues despite everything they've been through could be an anomaly. And it's all kind of... I don't know. It's it's kind of making me feel a little anxious because I don't know which gun is going to shoot first. Like, what's going to be the thing that, that pushes the plot forward or even pushes Washington to act out out of his uh paranoid state uh, in, in in a sense but um 
But overall, I hope you guys at the very least enjoy these these videos, regardless of the fact that they're not as intense, they're not as in-depth. Clearly, majority of you guys who are watching this have already seen Season 11, so you guys know more than I do when the turn happens, when things start getting a little bit more interesting and a little bit more focused on plot for me to be more in-depth and analyzing and talking about these kind of things. So I, I just want to make sure that, if anything, you guys understand my mindset going into this, because it's almost like, because I never really did this kind of thing, like with notes and, and rewatch and analyzing i didn't really start doing that until after season six uh or until until season six until around season six uh and by season seven and beyond the notes and like the deeper discussions were being had so to to, to, to kind of revert back to the blood gold chronicles days is a little you know it's it's a little hard for me to kind of it's it's, a, it's it's definitely a hard transition for me to 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 get into after everything that we've been through but um, I know nonetheless you guys have told me that the Chorus Trilogy is one of y'all's favorites. Some of y'all even compare it to be even better in your opinion than Project Freelancer. So I know those moments will come. Um, I I'm just still enjoying. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm very much still invested and entertained by the Reds and the Blues. Uh, the Blood Gold Chronicles banter. The, the the return to form of those of those fonder days. I think Miles, for the most part, definitely knew what he wanted to hit and what, it, what he wanted to go back to for the start of this trilogy before anything else which is bringing us back home in a sense like bringing us back to where it all started to returning us to hey i know we got into like the heavy plot of project freelancer the director the ai and everything else in between but rather than try to surpass that rather than try to one up project freelancer from the get-go i like that he dialed it back and he was like okay we're gonna take it back to where it all started uh thematically and then we're going to slowly build up to this new story um, in, in Miles' vision for, for everything else that, that comes uh, moving forward. But uh, that's going to do it for, for, this, uh, for this portion of the discussion, post thoughts, and all that other stuff. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And as a final send-off, I do want to give an extra special thank you to all of my patrons over on patreon.com slash murder of birds for your continued support kindness generosity i really hope you guys have been enjoying these red versus blue videos as i've been making them and an extra special thank you goes to the guys and gals over in the silver eyed warrior tier the wizard of remnant tier as well as the seasonal maiden tier being amy burgess blue rat 137 lewis a sandoval luke marshall ride the lightning scott porter super mona man the disturbed guy diesel 75 Daniel Burns, Ezra Lee, Go to Kai, Ian Dodd, Jamie Coleman, Matthew Trapp, Michael, and Winter Schnee. Uh, thank you guys all so much, especially for everybody who's watched these videos early access on Patreon as well as YouTube when these eventually hit. Um, without you guys, I wouldn't be able to do this. This has been great to be getting back to RVB, to be able to do other content like gaming and stuff like that. And your support is a big reason why that's even possible. So thank you guys all so very much. Uh, as always, be sure to leave your thoughts in the comment section and I will see you guys in the next batch for Red vs. Blue Season 11. Take care.